Nursing is a noble profession and many people want to get into it or want to become nurses but they don't know how to and so this is what we will be discussing today. This is the Dr. Tev Show where we're putting your health back into your hands. Today I'm being joined by a very special person today because she's not only my colleague but she's also my friend. Her name is Sister Lydia Valentine. She is a qualified professional nurse who's working at Red Cross Children's Hospital and so she'll be exploring this topic with me today. How are you Sister Valentine? Thank you for being with me today. I'm good thanks and yourself and thanks for having me. Yeah so can you tell us what is a nurse? So essentially a nurse is somebody who promotes health, prevents illness. Um, we care for all patients in all phases of their lives. And then we work with auton autonomy, we collaborate within a multidisciplinary team. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, I would say that's essentially what nursing is. We obviously care for all of mm. the population. <laughs> <laughs> now that's true, but can you also tell me, like, when did you qualify to being, a, well, becoming a professional nurse? I qualified in 2015. I started studying in 2012 and finished off in 2015. So mm. I've been working since 2016, February of 2016, and I'm still currently in yeah. the same position. In the same position. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you, so you're a professional nurse. Yes. So what I can extrapolate is that then there are different types of nurses then. Can you explain what are these, you know, subsets of nurses and also what are their roles and responsibilities in the health yeah, team? So essentially, um, you get a variety of nurses, which I didn't cover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then you get an enrolled nurse assistant, uh -huh. you get an enrolled nurse, you get a professional nurse, and then however the professional nurse as various aspects to them. So you get operational managers, area managers, deputy managers, nursing managers of an, that entire hospital. Okay. But they all are essentially professional nurses. Uh -huh. Then the enrolled nurse assistant, essentially they do basic nursing care, like your elementary care. They also assist with um, activities of daily life. And then your enrolled nurse, who is your staff nurse essentially, the one with the white bar, uh -huh. So they cover basic nursing care, a little bit of medication, wound care, um, and then some of them do like, they will record your observations and take by, like your vitals, measurements, and then they report in abnormalities. They all, the, the two nurse, the categories I just mentioned, mm. which is your ENA and your EN, they do work under our supervision as like the PN. Mm. So your professional nurse, which is like I said, PN now, we cover comprehensive nursing care. Um, we promote health, like I said earlier on, prevent illness. Yeah. We, there's quite a diverse amount of things that we actually do. Um, so we, like I said, we care physically for them. These yeah. budgets that we are part of, like we do financial management. We lead our staff, we are shift leaders. We um, essentially, to procurement as well, which also falls under financial. Procurement like, is getting, yeah. like ordering things yes, and so like getting equipment. And, yeah. and all of that. And then we, we obviously report like your abnormalities, not just with patients, with equipment and all of that. So we can ensure that the patient mm. is not flatlining when it's actually just a monitor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and then um, we cover research. We do clinical and, and non-clinical work. So like in the non-clinical, we do education, teaching, research. So you will find that some of the nurses, they will go on to become professors and they do their masters. Some of them eventually even become medical doctors, like they'll start with the nurses. Okay. <laughs> because they just have a love of oh, research, yes. finding out things, and then eventually they find the niche somewhere else. And then obviously we do do we have an ethical component mm. and legal component that we need to cover as well. So we either teach it or we are part of it, like in terms of ensuring that there's consent, we identify ourselves to patients. Essentially that is what the professional nurse does. We also do the EN, ENA's work as well as the EN work. We, we obviously don't necessarily, unless we are new to the post, yeah. we don't really work under supervision. So we work as independent practitioners. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and that's a lot. Then yeah. a lot of things that a professional knows that I did not know they do all of that. I've been educated today. So tell me, where can they work? Because now if they're doing all these roles and you're saying you can work independently, do they have to be in a hospital, clinical settings, or can they be in other places as well? Okay, so pointing out the fact that I say we work independently. If you are wanting to be a midwife, like I wanted to be a midwife. Yeah. <laughs> say if you are, you can work in, a, in an MOU, which is your maternity and obstetrics unit. So yeah. you can work there independently and you'll have obviously your ENs and your ENAs with you as well. So then that will be in a in a day hospital setting or a clinic setting. Yeah. And then you get your clinic sisters who essentially promote self and does preventative care. Yeah. And then you find like you you, you find nurses who can work in a day clinic. So uh. a, a day clinic, excluding the clinics yes. and the day hospitals, is a day clinic where you essentially do day surgery cases. Mm. You work there and you they can go home with that surgery or whether it's like patients coming in for dialysis or therapy, whatever they need for that specific day, they come in and then they'll go home by the end of the day. So it's something essentially that you can do within yeah. a seven to five or eight to five yeah. job. And then um, we obviously get those who work in hospital. Yeah. We get those who work in old age homes or like arcades, you get school nurses. Okay. <laughs> You get, well, there's a, there's a very big variety where you can find nurses. You get nurses on cruise ships. Yeah. You get nurses abroad, obviously, working in other countries as well. So our nurses sometimes prefer to go abroad. Overseas, yeah. Um, yeah, though, I think I've covered most of where you will find our nurses. Mm. Essentially, it is really broad. You don't need to stay in a hospital or do bedside care. You can... Or you can actually end up in a in a university and lecture and be a lecturer instead of just being a nurse with a patient. Uh huh. So the possibilities are endless. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And now, <laughs> so now someone's listening to this and they're really like intrigued. So how do you qualify to being and maybe let me put it this way. In, in high school, when you, what are the qualifications you need or the subjects, all of that, to get into nursing? Let's start there before going to where exactly do you go to do nursing? So okay. as a student, how so, do you... As a pupil, mm -hmm. in metric or... Well, obviously you choose your, your modules in grade 9. Yeah. So you would have to choose life sciences, which yeah. is like your human biology and then physical sciences it's a plus minus depending on where you study okay english is very important and then mathematics whether it is math literacy or pure maths and then they don't really consider your other languages but they should they do tend to require you to speak multiple languages but they just essentially look at your english, english okay and then so once you have those they obviously give you a certain depending on where you study there's certain requirements that you need to meet once you're on matric so when you do apply to the university or the college or wherever it is that you do apply whether it's private or public a mm -hmm. public institution where you're applying to mm -hmm. they will set out the requirements of what is expected of you to achieve to make to get accepted into the university or the college okay Okay, all right. So where is this college, universities? <laughs> so we have colleges and universities all over in South Africa. Mm. Obviously, in, we are based in Cape Town. So in Cape Town, we have UWC, which is the University of the Western Cape, and then Stellenbosch University as well as CPUT, mm. um, Cape Peninsula University of Technology, who covers, um, I don't know, some, well, the older folks would know Nico Milan. Okay. So that's essentially where the nursing college is. It's based in Haidafal. Okay. Um, but they fall under the CPUT. So okay. they essentially, previously they were a college, but now the university as well. Okay. And then there are other, obviously, further scattered um, institutions. Institutions yeah. in NetCare. Of, NetCare is a private, uh, private institution mm. that does offer nursing as well. Um, yeah. So those are the places. But then I think... So UCT, sorry, UCT offers nursing as well, but not an undergrad program. So they just do postgrad. So whether it's a diploma or master's or PhD, but they don't do undergrad anymore. Oh, okay. And then Salem Bosch is the university that opened up the undergrad program again, I think it's two years now. Mm-hmm. 
it, yeah, I think it's like two years now that the program is open for undergrads again as well. Okay, but I think then for people who are interested, they should actually go and research yeah. in their different provinces where they can get in or where they are offering those yeah, courses. So on the South African Nursing Council website, you will find the accredited institutions there. So whether it's private or pu public institutions, you can find it there. If mm. they are not accredited, please don't study there. So don't waste your time with yeah. unaccredited or non-accredited yeah. facilities, no matter how much they say they can do this for you. Okay, so what has your experience been as a sister? You know, um, have, you have you found it rewarding? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think nursing has its ups and downs. Yeah, it's true. I, in recent years, I found it to be very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Well, initially as a student, I found it very rewarding. I thought, I don't know, my patients were very fond of me. Yeah, I can see why. <laughs> I think it's just my bubbly personality uh. and speaking to them and sitting down. And, you know, because a lot of them sometimes, a lot of the patients that we get is not from Cape Town. Okay. It's not even from South Africa. So you just sit down and you will have a conversation with them. And they don't actually get visitors and you will speak to them. And I think just the smile on their face with the fact that they look forward to seeing you. I know, yes. like, when I was a student, I studied at the university, we didn't do a lot of practicals. I did, like, one practical a week. So I was one day in the hospital per week. Wow. And from 7 to 4, which wasn't many hours. Mm. But then I think, like, when even you, if you, like, if there's a long stay patient and they find you there, you find them there every week. Yes. They, they look forward to, to essentially seeing you. Like, uh. I've missed you. Like, where have you been? So I... That for me was the fact that they look forward to seeing somebody who's going to bring some light and brightness and humor mm. it was rewarding for me. And just the fact that you can see how patients progress. Like, I had a patient that I literally thought was busy dying. And every week I came back and I'm like, Lord, please see this. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the way that he improved, like I remember yeah. coming there and it's just like, I can't, my heart is too weak. And you get there and eventually they're going home like, what happened to the patient that was in that cubicle? No, he got, he got better and he was discharged. That to me is the most rewarding thing mm. ever. And now at the moment I'm in theatre and I think the rewarding aspects for me are my patients come in very, very ill. Like for some reason I get like the sickest of the sickest patients. Shame, man. And seeing them recover and hearing their good stories and they go home whether they are post transplant or we, remo we remove the worm's tumor or yeah. something and then going home and they are okay that to me is very very rewarding yeah no that's that's very touching and that's um that's a reflection that i think each person or every person out there should know that nursing is rewarding but why is it that people have a negative perception of sisters. Do you think that people think <laughs> negatively about sisters? Because they're forever on the news. They dropped a baby, they did this, they did that. You know. <laughs> the baby got stolen. <laughs> yeah, like why? Why do you think that nursing gets such a bad rip out there? I'll, I'll speak from my experience. Yes. So, I, <laughs> um, the, like I, I told you there is an article where it says essentially nurses are devils in white exactly. in white clothing. In white clothing, imagine. Um, yeah, that I was very shocked by, but I could agree with it as well. Because you walk into, like when I was a student and I walked into a, in, into a ward and coming from the university, it was just like, we, we won't teach you. Because you come one day a week, so we're going to teach you now, and then next week you won't know, we will need to reteach it to you. And it was just an unfortunate affair for me. Mm. I was just like, I just thought that I don't know anything, but I really need to learn. So I was eager to learn, and I think that helped me. And then I think people sort of changed because they're like, okay, yeah, somebody who's willing to learn. But just that, the treatment that you gave of like, you come once a week, so we won't teach you, that was off-putting. Like... I thought, well, I didn't quit. Obviously, no, I didn't quit. No, you didn't. Say you are. <laughs> but that, and, the, and sometimes you walk into environments and it's very hostile because it's either these critical patients and they expect you to require a certain knowledge and have insight, but how do you have it when there's mm. nobody guiding you? So there is that hostility and sometimes just the bedside manner. People come in and like I think they forget to leave 
we we person we the person the yes. clashes at home yeah they, they bring in them to work i mean we human at the end of the day mm. so we do sometimes we we there are days you wake up and you you know feeling great and it's not your best day so yes I, we do understand that we 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 acknowledge that but then there are just days we i don't know like there was i, I had somebody who she was just always horrible like period mm. and i was just like you know at the end of the day your patient doesn't deserve this mm. so i think that's why people look at us in a bad like i know also like sometimes we the influx of patients within cape town is like i i think you would know because you have clinics that's over filled with yes, like over booked yeah. like crazy yeah so now you're working through a, a load of patients and like in the clinics for instance and i think this is where i saw it often people would then take a break and patients would not be happy with that but you obviously need to see to yourself as well so that you can see to your patients and i think people view you as bad because now you're taking an hour break yet you still have the two patients to see mm. to but at the end of the day it's either we are short of staff and we need to create more staff to see to the influx of patients yeah <laughs> or you need to vocalize your patient or communicate with them like or your clients depending on where you're working um you know, look if this is how it is like and sometimes i think if communication is important so that people don't view you like you know this is happening or mm. there's a bad aspect to it sometimes it's literally just the communication to make them understand why you're going to be away for a certain period or how long it may be the expected time period sometimes uh the, the hospitals will put on signs that will say like an expected time a waiting period then you know okay if i come in you come in with your lunch you come in with your breakfast or whatever and at that sort of hour you wait yeah so that's how you can essentially overcome it um there are people who obviously view nursing in a positive way yeah. because they have probably experienced the good side of good, it the good side of very professional and excellent nurses because yes there are those yeah. out there like i have quite a few friends who studied with me who I would literally submit the name to the Department of Health and say this person deserves a Nobel Prize because they are so good at their job. Mm. So yes, there are people who view it in a bad light and those who view it in a positive light as well. Okay. And so what would your um, advice be for prospective students who want to do nursing? What would your <laughs> advice be to them? I would advise them that if they are compassionate and passionate they have empathy they are kind and they treat humans like human then they are more than welcome to join us mm. is at the end of the day a patient comes in and they they obviously you don't ask to be sick you don't ask to to gain certain illness illnesses or diseases you you just need you already like afraid in that moment or anxious you don't need somebody to be rude mm. to you or anything so you just we just essentially need people who will come people who are understanding people who can communicate people who are assertive and advocate and love working with people essentially and you just wanting to make a person stay better by being you or yes. having some humor depending on the scenario or you know like if it's a time and place or anything yeah. as well so I would encourage or inspire nurses like if it, because the nursing is so diverse as well say so if you don't want to do bedside nursing there is a lot more things that you mm. can do um like nursing is a like a broad aspect like literally we spoke about it earlier and there's like a very big variety of things that you can do and if you do love working with people then maybe nursing can be for you for you no i love that and what are your two closing thoughts Um <laughs> so I would say that to those nurses who are already out there be humble be kind work with integrity have a good work ethic thank you for the work that you do mm. we acknowledge you we appreciate you because often we don't find people I feel like nurses are probably the most underappreciated people True. in the hospitals um and we do have staff who obviously pour out the things but from a nurse or me learning and being a nurse i 
uh, if I can, I would usually say thank you to those who I can. So thank you to those nurses. <laughs> well, I think we appreciate you. Um, to those who are aspiring to be nurses, mm. it's not easy. Yeah. It's a challenging. It's a challenging road, but it's very rewarding. Mm. And if you do love it, then or if you do love working with people, whether it is adults, children, seniors then you can choose what you want to do but you will find it rewarding and you will love it if, yeah. if, if your heart is in it mm, i love that if your heart is in it so they should definitely come and join right yes please <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but thank you so much sister valentine for being with me on this episode i really appreciate it mm -hmm. <laughs> and to all of you viewers i want to say thank you so much for watching this episode and if you'd like more information about this please do leave your comments below and we will get back to you and please don't forget to like share subscribe and push the notification button so you know when we post our next episode so until next time please do take care of yourselves take care of each other and remember your health is in your hands God bless. <laughs>